I want to get to the Varkin volatility and talk to one of the great legends in the ETF business because he's here today and I want to pick his brain. So you've seen the market sold off, the volumes exploded. Did you see what happened last week in the spider? This is the biggest ETF in the world, ever has been. We saw more than 70% increase in volume last week. It did 100 million shares four out of five days. This is a $280 priced equity doing 100 million shares routinely now. It's early, but we're already pacing to exceed the average daily volume today. Let's bring in the man behind the spy guy who runs the spy, Jim Ross of State Street Global Advisors. He helped mold the entire ETF business a long, long time ago, an old friend of mine. Thanks for joining us. Bob, it's great to be here. I, I gotta On pick your beat day. I gotta pick your, <laughs> your brains about this volume that you see. Yeah. Uh, investors just went right to the spy and started yeah. trading it. It seems like what they want here is they want liquidity and they want tight spreads. Tell us how it's trading right now. So I haven't specifically looked for, but I'm going to bet it's trading at a penny wide spread because that's what it does every given day irrespective of volatility and we see this vol when, when volatility comes in the market and if I'm correct the VIX is up over 20 today I think last time I looked it was right. at 21 up 30 percent for the day when you see that happening SPY is going to trade at very high volumes investors use SPY to get in and out of the markets all day long during volatile markets and it's the most heavily traded equity security in the world it trades three times more than Apple so from that perspective, the, wait, three times the dollar volume you're talking dollar about. Dollar volume is three, is times, three more times more than Apple's well, dollar volume. Yes. Well, that makes equity sense. Security in the world. About 100 million shares and 280 dollars. Do the math on that. How? We know ETFs are used for tactical purposes by active traders, mm -hmm. but it really is used tactically for the SPY. Can you make a stab at what, what percentage of the trades are just long-term buy-and-hold guys that want to just sit on it and use it as a core asset versus hedge fund guys who are coming in, moving out, in and out every day? So, Bob, obviously with volume like that, there's a significant amount of that spoof that want to go in and out. But there are long-term buy-and-hold shareholders in SPY. They've been in there for a very long time. They trust the liquidity profile. They trust the market resiliency of SPY and the consistency of the spread. You know, we've talked a lot in the ETF industry over the years about total cost of ownership. And I think when we talk about that, people just think about price. And I want people to really look at, look at total cost of ownership. We include everything. Include the spread. Include the consistency yeah. of the spread in volatile markets when you may want to execute well, a trade. Wait, well, I'm going to pin you down. Obviously, the SPY has been criticized because you guys charge a lot for this product. It's nine basis points. Mm -hmm. That's been, you've lost some assets under management to your competitors. They charge less. Vanguard and I shares at four and three uh, basis points. Are you... Are, is, are you asserting that you're worth the extra money because in times of stress like this, you get tighter spreads uh, and, and better liquidity than your competitors? That's a pretty bold claim because th these are pretty big ETFs. Yeah. Hey, and I'm going to say yes, 100 percent, because if you look at different you points. Prove, could you demonstrate, for example, that the SPY has tighter spreads and better liquidity I, than your the c competitors? We can demonstrate that, that in times of volatile markets, without any question, if you look at Q4 and if you look even, I'm going to guess today, SPY is consistently traded stayed at that one penny spread. And think about that, one penny on 280 bucks. Tom, you watch so. this. Is, is, is this a little bit of a, a sales job that we're getting no, for SPY it, over no, here? It, no, it's, it's fact. And if, as we're talking about trading here, the difference in expense ratio doesn't matter if you're trading regularly. What you want is execution. It's all about liquidity. And if on any given day, SPY is 40 to 45 percent of overall ETF trading volume, that says something. Now, again, there are other S&P 500 ETFs that right. do a good job. The, it's the opposite true. Does it mean that the other ones don't have the tight spreads in ne necessarily? When the market, when the, so, so we know when the market when the market gets down like this, a lot of big names, a lot of big names, yeah. those spread widens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know this because maybe because market makers are better at risk risk management. They widen the spreads out to protect themselves a little bit. Um, and yet your assertion, which is rather remarkable, that there is no widening in the spread here. There's no all. widening in the spread of SPY. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you a client example versus me. One of our clients was on stage at a conference last week and got asked the question, what S&P 500 ETF do you use? He goes, I use SPY. Reporter questioned him, said, why would you use SPY three times more yeah. than the cheapest one? He goes, because I trust the confidence of the market that I can get in and out of that anytime I need to, and that's more important to me than a couple of basis points. The other thing, of course, that's important is 
nine basis points doesn't matter if you're moving in and out. If you're a tactical trader, no, that's not yeah. going to have much of, a, of an impact on your of a, your overall thinking. So that would that would make right. some some sense. But to even make. if you, I mean, tactical every day, yes. Even if you're tactical over months, Bob, it does matter over time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking spy here. You go to the most liquid sector ETFs. You go to the most liquid industries. You go to DIA. It's very important to make sure you're looking at the underlying, under, underlying liquidity profile of your ETF because. The cost of execution can far outweigh the couple of basis point yeah. saving and expense ratio. And, and one other thing just to throw in, 90% of those trades are actually swapping a basket with yeah. somebody else. Yeah. It's not the creation. People ask me about this all the time. Yeah. Can you tell us, I say most of the time, the vast majority of the time, a ETF like SPY will trade and the underlying stocks don't trade. There's, there's no redemption or creation of the underlying. Is, is that correct? And can you tell us what the percentage is? Yeah, I don't have the specific percentage, Bob, but think about it. SPY on average will trade turn over 15 to 18 billion dollars today. Volatile all day like today, it could be 28, 30 billion. And the underlying trade, underlying action could be a billion dollars one way or the other, could be five. But it's not consistent on a daily basis, but it's never the same amount as the trading volume. Okay. It's never happened. Okay.